April 29, 1975 was a special day for the crews aboard the USS Midway. They were off the coast of South Vietnam, on a special operation. And for South Vietnamese Air Force Major Buen Lee, it was the most important day of his life. He and his wife and five children, a family whose fate was like a kite floating on the edge of a cliff, experienced great UPS and downs. In 1973, the United States and the North Vietnamese Communists signed the Paris Peace Accords, under which American troops would gradually withdraw from Vietnam, a place 10,000 miles away from the American, but which stirred up the United States. With the U.S. troops out of Vietnam, the chaotic and corrupt South Vietnamese government could not hold off the North Vietnamese Army on its own. The North Vietnamese Army attacked the South Vietnamese from both the North and the West. And the South Vietnamese Army was in a precarious position as it was losing ground. Fearing the arrival of the Communists, the South Vietnamese did everything they could to escape. And as the North Vietnamese Army pushed forward, this window of escape became smaller and smaller. At the end of March 1975, when the last civilian flight, a Boeing 727, left Da Nang, the captain found he could not recover the landing gear because even the landing gear compartment was crammed with fleeing Vietnamese. By the end of April, the North Vietnamese Army had invaded downtown Saigon and the sound of gunfire was clearly audible. Major Buen, a pilot in the South Vietnamese Air Force, was flying a small plane A Cessna 170 for military use. And on this plane, all his hopes rested. April 29th was a fair day, his airfield was on an island. He heard on the radio that Saigon was about to fall and he thought he couldn't wait any longer. So he stuffed his whole family, his wife and five children into this small plane and took off. He didn't know exactly where he was going to land, but he knew that the American carriers were cruising in the eastern waters and he needed to take his chances. He was right in thinking that the carrier, the USS Midway, had been off South Vietnam a few days earlier, on an operation codenamed Frequent Wind, to receive the 5,000 Americans evacuated from South Vietnam. They had also been ordered to accept fleeing South Vietnamese where possible. On that morning, the U.S. State Department had officially issued the most urgent order to evacuate all Americans in Vietnam. Even the Prime Minister of South Vietnam had arrived on board the USS Midway in a helicopter. Helicopters were flying in from all over South Vietnam to the USS Midway, and in addition to the American helicopters, the South Vietnamese were flying all the planes they could off the ground to escape the fallen country. The sailors on the USS Midway were mobilized to accept these escapees. They looked after the women and children, but also searched the adult men, confiscating their weapons and contraband. The corner of the deck was littered with confiscated pistols. The uninvited helicopters soon filled the deck and the sailors towed them to one place on trailers and concentrated them, making as much room as possible for those who came later. Major Biwin and his family had been in the air for over an hour when he came across a group of helicopters, all heading for the midway. Major Biwin was happy to follow them and soon he too was over the midway. The midway's duty officer soon saw the small aircraft, but Major Biwin's aircraft radio was not working, so there was no way to make direct contact with the midway, and he kept circling the carrier, turning on his landing lights, and constantly shaking his wings. Finally, Major Biwin came up with an idea, he wrote his thoughts on a few notes and then dropped them as he flew over the midway. The breeze blew all these light papers into the sea and finally, Biwin tucked the notes into his cowhide holster and dropped them, finally dropping them on deck. The sailors on the midway finally got Major Biwin's message and he said, can you move the helicopter on deck? I want to land on the runway, I have enough fuel for one more hour, please help me especially my wife and five children. Major Buin Cessna, despite being a small aircraft, was designed for a land airport and did not have a tail hook to hook onto the carrier steel cables that brought the aircraft to a stop, so it needed a long runway position, not to mention that it was overloaded. If it had been allowed to land on the USS Midway, not only would the South Vietnamese helicopters have been lost, 
But even the US Navy's own helicopters would have been pushed into the sea. Together, these helicopters were worth millions of dollars. The information was quickly escalated to USS Midway's captain, Lawrence Chambers, who was the first African-American captain of the aircraft carrier USS Midway. Chambers contacted his superior, Admiral William L. Harris, commander of the task force, and Admiral Harris wondered if Major Buen could land the plane in the nearby sea and send rescue helicopters from nearby destroyers to rescue them. But Chambers soon realized that this would not be feasible either, the Cessna's landing gear was fixed and the moment it hit the water it would flip the whole plane upside down and it would sink in seconds, not to mention that there were small children on board. So Chambers decided to ignore the advice of his superiors and ordered the sailors to throw down whatever needed to be pushed into the sea, as long as they could make enough runway. So the sailors pushed 10 or so helicopters out to sea. Chambers also ordered the carrier to sail into the wind, at full speed, so that Major Buen would have enough wine to land. By this time, the runway had been cleared on the midway and the fate of Major Buen and his family was in his own hands for what should have been the most important landing of his life. The aircraft touched down in the middle of the deck, bounced a little, then shot out some distance, and finally came down to the cheers of all. Major Buen's family had finally been saved. This image became one of the signs of escape from totalitarianism to the free world. And all the crews on the USS Midway even chipped in to give the family settling down in the USA. They all later became American citizens. Captain Chambers thought he would be held responsible for this decision, but he had no trouble and went on to become an admiral in the US Navy. The day after Major Buen's strange encounter, on April 30th, the last helicopter flew away from the American embassy in Saigon and a few hours later North Vietnamese army tanks rolled into the streets of Saigon. Throughout Operation Frequent Wind, the USS Midway and other warships of the 7th Fleet rescued a total of 7,800 men. Throughout South Vietnam, a total of some 130,000 people fled their homeland. An unknown number of others died on the way to escape. This is the story of what happened in that sea 47 years ago.